Starbuck, this uh, campaign has been harsh at times. What I hear from voters is they don't want any more of that. You've questioned Senator Durbin's patriotism, and later in press releases kind of revel in having questioned his patriotism. Is he not patriotic? I have no idea. I'm, he probably is a patriotic guy, I would think, but that's not, but that's not what the people of our state think. Or, or not, I don't I think they even say that. That's not fair. That's not fair. You said, which was that you questioned his patriotism. Okay, I questioned it. He probably, you know, and maybe that's fair, maybe it's not. But let's go to the background of this. I think it's fairer to say. Why did you question his patriotism? Because he's done so many unpatriotic things. What, what is unpatriotic? Uh, comparing our troops to Nazis or the interrogators or whatever Senator Durbin really meant to say there. Comparing our administration to Pol Pot. Comparing Gitmo to a gulag saying that this surge was a failure before it began, joking with college students about burning flags, not decrying the, the ad from moveon.org that compared Gen, said General Petraeus would betray it was a betrayal. Those kind of things that people come up to me every day and bitterly complain about. And I think, you know, these kind of remarks undermine our troops, their ability to fight, our nation's credibility in the world, and I just don't think he should have said these things. I'm going to question a lot of things about my opponent, his, his positions. I will never question your patriotism. I think that is the refuge of scoundrels. I think what you have done here uh, to raise a question as to whether I love this country is the lowest form of politics, the lowest. Uh, the bottom line is I love this country, and I've proven it, I hope, with my public service and the things that I've fought for. We can disagree on many things, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sarberg, but we don't disagree on love of country. Okay. And for you to take someone who comes up to you at some meeting and says something outrageous and repeat it as if it's gospel, just as irresponsible. I don't think I've repeated anything that you haven't said. I apologize. But I think I've just simply repeated the facts in this particular instance. And so the fact of the matter is, you said very, but many people, considered to be very unpatriotic things. I apologize if you're upset with me, and I, I understand. But the fact of the matter is you shouldn't say these things. People are hurt. They're still hurt. Families. We've got uh, a mom, uh, head of Band of Mothers, who was very familiar with her campaign and stays in touch with us, whose uh, son has done four tours uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq and is very upset with Senator Durbin's comments. And all she simply has asked was for Senator Durbin to talk to her. And unfortunately, um, he's refused to do that. That's now, not true, and I want to make it clear. Okay. This lady has come to our office repeatedly and complains uh, incessantly, but she is overlooking the obvious. And the obvious is uh, I have been working hard with Barack Obama, who's on the Veterans Committee, to help the veterans in this state for as long as I've been in the Senate. When we found out that for 20 straight years, Illinois veterans were receiving less in average disability payments than veterans in any other state, Barack and I led the charge to change that, to make certain that every veteran in the state had an opportunity to appeal their decision for disability rulings. When it came time to, funding the vet, uh, to fund the Veterans Administration, it was the Democrats in the Senate who came up with an additional $1 billion because the Bush administration had unfortunately lowballed what was actually needed for the returning veterans. When it came to the Marion VA Hospital where nine innocent veterans died because of the malpractice of a surgeon, I took the lead with Congressman Jerry Costello and Republican Congressman Shimkus, not only calling for an investigation but changing that. I'm running an ad now which, which reflects uh, a family that I've come to know, the Edmondson family, uh, come to know well, that I met because I took the time to visit him in his hospital room as I have visited all of the veterans hospitals in this state and repeatedly visit them at Walter Reed in Washington, D.C. without fanfare, without publicity. Uh, for you to suggest because one person is upset with me that I haven't stood up for veterans, I'd like to ask you this. Why do you think the Veterans of Foreign Wars has endorsed me and not endorsed you? Uh, let's not deal with that because most of them No, veterans, let's deal with that. Okay, the veterans of why, why? The vet, every veteran I talk about talk to, and there are very many, so please don't suggest that that's not the case. Sadly, they hold you in great disdain. And uh, that's, that's, more veterans. that's unfortunate. Now, you're a very powerful guy, and I understand, and I will tell you right now, you have done a great job on some of these issues. You have done a wonderful job. Um, 
the Wounded Warriors thing and all those kind of things that you work on are to your credit. Beverly Pearlson's complaint is that... Pretty good for an unpatriotic senator. It is pretty good for an unpatriotic senator. You also said that the senator referred to an ad that he said is shamelessly exploiting our troops. How is a a political ad exploiting troops? Well, I think what he's trying to do is kind of rehabilitate his image with the with some of the the veterans and, and people involved in, in in the military and and I understand it and I think he has a right in this case I think to, to make a case that he has worked hard on this issue well, and and I'm a little I, different from exploitation well I think it is and maybe that ad was a little bit too strong I, I I think I might take that one back a little bit that that was too strong but I think Beverly Pearlson's concerned I don't think she has one complaint about how you handle the wounded veterans issue at all. I think she would applaud you. Um, her simple complaint is that when you do the things you've done, she believes that your actions lead to further harm to our troops. And that those particular actions have hurt our troops and have put them in danger. And she simply wants to talk to you about that topic so that you might understand her feelings on this. And I still would encourage you to do that. She's going to be, I think, here today. I hope that you'll go down and talk to her. Um, I do applaud your efforts on behalf of the troops. I would like to do one thing further for the troops, and that's that um, I don't think the veterans should be confined in any way to the VA system. Um, I think you know the veterans have been shortchanged in essence. The Marion thing that you are attempting to take on is a, is a laudable goal, but I guess my question is, why did it happen? Are you responsible for that in, in any way? I mean, this, the veterans' system is, is somewhat broken. People shouldn't have to drive three hours to get to a veterans' hospital if they're a veteran. They should be able to go anywhere they want. They should be able to go any time they want. They should be able to access benefits in any hospital in the nation. That's what they should be able to do. They should be have first class. They should have the exact same health insurance that Senator Durbin has from the government. The exact same thing. If there are additional veteran benefits through the VA, I think that's fine. But I think despite a very good effort in many ways on behalf of veterans, I think there's much more to do. And I think there are many people out there like Beverly Pearlson who would simply like an explanation or an apology for some of the things you said. And I will simply leave it at that. I don't think this conversation is going anywhere constructive.